Okay, let's come back to uh, another model now. So we are jumping between models and numerical methods and grids. Uh, the wind-driven currents we looked at in the first part of the course, uh, we looked at all the major currents. We had a trade winds, mid-latitude westerlies, we had the uh, unique situation of the Southern Ocean with the circumpolar current, and the main features, these subtropical gyres that we talked about, uh, had these intensified boundary currents on the western side, the Gulf Stream, the Kuroshio, the East Australian current, uh, the Brazil uh, current down here. Indian Ocean is uh, a bit complicated because you have a western boundary current that completely reverses direction because of the monsoonal reversals. Uh, these boundary currents are known for a while. There's a nice story about how Ben Franklin, uh, who was also the Postmaster General, uh, realized that the ships uh, took a much shorter time going from the uh, American continent to Europe, but they took much longer while coming back. And his whaler cousin told him that there was a strong current, so if they go south and come back, they'll come back faster. So he sat down and sketched a very nice uh, current of the Gulf Stream based on uh, the account from the whalers and other ships. Um, coming back to what Stommel did, imagine that now we know so much about the western boundary currents, western boundary intensifications, they roll in the heat transport, Atlantic Meridional overturning circulation, thermohaline circulation, and so on and so forth. Uh, till 1940s, people didn't know exactly why there was intensification on the West, even though they knew that such currents existed. In fact, Kuroshio in Japanese means black current because it's not very productive. Uh, Japanese love their fish, and anything that doesn't have fish, they wouldn't like it. Um, so let Henry Stommel was the first one to sit down and write a simple model and show why there is western boundary intensification. So let's start with this figure we looked at uh, for deriving the shallow water model. So let's flatten out the bottom, uh, make it simple, and assume that the sea surface elevation is much smaller than the average depth, and we will look for a steady state solution from uh, for our uh, equations of motion we wrote down before uh, with all the nonlinear terms, the pressure gradient term, the Coriolis term, and the frictional forcing uh, terms uh, at the top and the bottom. Uh, and of course we derived the hydrostatic balance out of this by assuming dW dt, the uh, total derivative of W, the acceleration term, uh, is zero for large-scale uh, circulation. Once we do that, we can again integrate from the bottom to the surface uh, height uh, my, uh, of this simplified equation. Uh, so we end up with minus f minus h to eta rho v dz uh, equal to minus uh, of minus h to eta dp dx dz plus tau xz uh, at eta where and minus tau xz at minus h. So there's bottom friction and top friction in the zonal direction. Similarly, we have uh, bottom friction and uh, friction at the surface in uh, the meridional direction and integral of the meridional uh, pressure gradient. So basically, we are dropping the nonlinear terms this drops out because of the hydrostatic assumption. This drops out because of the uh, steady state assumption. So we only have these terms, and we are integrating these sides set equal to zero on uh, the other side, right? So let's define a mass uh, transport function as uh, integral of the current uh, from minus h to eta multiplied by density. So this is the mass transport in each direction, which is just the integration. We don't make any assumption of the vertical shear, etc. here, like we did in the shallow water equation. Um, so this is what Henry Stommel did. He uh, took the steady state equations, uh, linearized and uh, assuming flat bottom and uh, the sea level being much smaller than the depth of the water column. Uh, he assumed a simple uh, rectangular geometry uh, with extent of uh, 
L and B in the zonal and meridional directions and had meridional and zonal uh, mass transport in the uh, work column and his goal was to figure out why the mass transport on the western boundary current gets intensified. So Stommel chose the simplest possible parameterization for this uh, effect uh, of uh, shear and postulated that shear exerted at the bottom is proportional to the velocity or the mass transport respectively. So he simplified uh, the uh, this term as, uh, as a frictional term where r is uh, a characteristic time uh, 1 over tau, tau is the characteristic time so it decays over certain uh, time scales so uh, the left hand side becomes minus fmy the meridional transport equal to minus uh, integral of uh, dp dx in the z direction um, and the uh, forcing at the top and friction at the bottom and uh, the uh, meridional equation becomes F times meridional uh, zonal transport equal to minus uh, integral of dp dy dz plus the uh, meridional wind forcing at the surface minus friction at the bottom. So we need to figure out mx and my given the forcing uh, and we need to basically see if we can write a uh, and given the pressure gradients which are not independent of the uh, wind forcing and mx and my are not independent either because they have to be related through the continuity equation, right? So we can take these two equations and do a little bit of manipulation. So d dx of the first equation minus d dy of the second equation, uh, which is typically what is done in uh, many uh, uh, models of the uh, ocean or atmosphere circulation. So remembering that uh, df dy is just beta, we get when we do df dy, uh, we get beta my. So beta is the beta effect, the gradient of Coriolis in the meridional direction times the meridional uh, transport plus F times del mx del, y, del mx del x plus del my del y. Immediately you recognize the form from the continuity equation. Should be equal to del tau yz del x, so the meridional. Uh, uh, forcing minus del x z del y, the uh, zonal forcing, this is basically the wind stress curl, right? If you curl your fingers uh, around the wind, for example, trade winds in the uh, low latitudes and uh, westerlies in the mid latitudes, you get a negative curl because the fingers, the right hand rule, the thumb will point into the ocean, okay? Minus r times del m y del x minus del m x del y, which is the uh, frictional dissipation of uh, the transport because of the simple assumption that bottom friction is proportional to velocity or the mass transport. So divergence of uh, m mass transport dmx dx plus dmy dy is zero by mass continuity, a non-divergent flow uh, constant density, obviously we can write a stream function where the uh, stream lines are basically flow lines where the flow is tangential to the stream lines. So we can easily write a function for transport as minus d psi dy uh, and my as d psi dx so that automatically you can do uh, dmx dx and dmy dy to satisfy continuity equation which is typically how we get uh, stream functions. Uh, we just need uh, to then uh, close this system by prescribing wind stress uh, as forcing. So Stommel's model basically came down to beta d psi dx equal to d tau y z dx minus dx d tau x z dy minus the frictional term del, uh, del square psi del x squared plus del square psi del y squared. Um, this is the second order equation boundary value problem. It's very easy to set the boundary conditions because at the boundaries uh, you don't want any mass transport in any direction. So mx which is minus d psi dy has to go to zero at the y boundaries, meridional boundaries and my uh, equal to d psi dx has to go to zero. Sorry. 
mx has to go to zero at the zonal boundaries and my has to go to zero at the meridional boundaries. Since only derivatives are needed at the boundary without losing any generality, we can set psi to be a constant along the boundary or we can just set it to zero as well. So just set psi equal to zero at the boundaries and you end up with an equation that looks similar to what we had before uh, with alpha x b d psi d c d a eta plus beta uh, this was in the fifth chapter when we were trying to show uh, what kind of boundary conditions uh, are required so obviously in our case uh, we are setting the n uh, flux normal to the boundaries to be zero so that's the Dirichlet boundary condition we are imposing here I just wanted to include these equations just to remind you that we did this before so boundary value problem second order equation with Dirichlet boundary conditions uh, Stommel took a very simple case where he assumed that the meridional wind stress did not vary uh, so zero and he set the zonal winds to be a function of uh, latitude so that you could get easterlies in low latitude and westerlies in uh, high latitudes uh, with the uh, uh, dividing line in the middle he was just looking to see why there is a western boundary intensification so the equation then just uh, again uh, beta d psi dx equals uh, the wind stress curl minus the friction term and the uh, gradient gets strong at the boundary uh, as you come uh, close to zero and then you go to the interior boundaries uh, uh, gradient is strong so psi is uh, uh, can be equal to one approximately one minus e to the minus x over delta where delta is the uh, kind of the boundary layer thickness if you will where the magnitude of the gradient is strong uh, of the stream function stream function uh, gradient is strong just means that the flow intensifies if the stream flow streamlines are close together there is faster flow right parallel to the streamlines tangential to the streamlines so this is uh, approximately beta times 1 over delta equal to the inverse of the decay time scale frictional time scale uh, times 1 over delta squared from this uh, equation just by doing simple dimensional analysis from this approximation uh, of the boundary layer uh, psi. Uh, this gives us uh, a, a scaling of the boundary layer that it's approximately equal to r over beta so relates to the bottom friction we set uh, proportional to the transport and beta the gradient of Coriolis in the y direction so in the Stommel model the intensification of the boundary layer which is what we are looking for uh, in terms of the squeezing of the streamlines is proportional to R over beta and we don't look for uh, uh, an analytic solution here we look for a, a, a numerical solution so this is stream function psi in square drops where square drop, uh, one square drop is 10 to the 6 meter cube per second uh, for uh, uh, some reference uh, the Gulf Stream as it passes between Florida and Cuba has a volume transport of about 100 square drop. How large is it? The Amazon which is one of the biggest rivers has a, a volume transport of only 0.2 square drop. Okay, so just imagine 500 times the uh, transport of the Amazon goes through the Gulf Stream there. Uh, so this is uh, the Stommel model 640 for beta equals to 2 times uh, 10 to the minus 11 and beta equal to 0. So if you set beta equal to 0, so you have Coriolis but there is no gradient so you can imagine that we are on a cylinder rather than a sphere, then you get a very symmetric solution. Uh, for this equation we derived. Uh, stream flow is very symmetric. Uh, there is no uh, intensified uh, boundary layer in one side or the other. The boundary layer effect is still there. You can see that these lines are more widely spaced than here. So there is accelerated flow here and well accelerated is the wrong word because we have a steady flow. So 
faster flow here than and here than in the middle interior but when you have a realistic beta you see that this solution gets immediately uh, asymmetric here uh, r is set to be 1 over 6 days which is a good assumption and uh, t is uh, the uh, forcing is set to 0.1 uh, newton per meter squared in the equation uh, here okay okay uh, so with this simple model Stommel was the first one to discover that because we are on a sphere because Coriolis varies with latitude we have uh, western boundary intensification which is one of the most fascinating parts of ocean circulation the numerical solution here was computed on a grid with nx equal to 100 ny equal to 20 so 100 grid points in x uh, 20 grid points in y uh, several thousand uh, kilometers in each direction representing approximately the North Atlantic and using the method of successive over relaxation that we looked at before uh, of solving an equation uh, uh, right the current flows clockwise and is parallel to the stream flow so we have uh, straight winds blowing this way and pulling the water this way and then uh, flow going northward and then uh, coming back so you have a clockwise uh, subtropical gyre circulation with the western boundary intensification there are of course uh, uh, the details behind it uh, as to why the western boundary intensification must happen on the west given the beta has to do with the uh, mass balance and vorticity balance so wind is putting in vorticity into the ocean because it's churning the ocean uh, with the wind stress curl which is in our equation and because Coriolis varies with latitude there is a transport induced by this distribution of wind forcing so mass transport and vorticity conservation require that western boundary intensification can only happen on the western boundary in each in both hemispheres okay so this is a cute example of uh, modeling wind driven circulation looking at this simple stormal model okay let's leave it here